Well, this is it. Lady Ashbury's domain. Why am I not surprised it's not on any maps? I'd better hurry. Find why Elizabeth's blood creates disasters. Learn the truth about Elizabeth. I am curious. I like this so far. I mean, I haven't seen what this, I'm pretty sure epilogue is going to be exactly, but I was worried it would just end right there. Like I need to search for the woman I love the end. Maybe we'll find her in vampire two or something like that. Or maybe just like a really quick epilogue in the cutscene. But no, we actually get to play it, which I like a lot. God, what a gorgeous scene. But yeah, we better hurry. It's sun's coming out. Hmm? Hi? Beautiful morn, my child. It looks like dawn is here at long last. Can't you just leave me alone? Your precious queen has been sent back to the bottomless pit from when she came. The nightmare is almost over. I am here to say goodbye. The sun's warmth exhausts me. Soon I will rejoin my queen in her endless sleep. It is over. You did well. So our beloved mother will just go back to sleep, now that enough people have suffered. Is that it? No, Jonathan. The Morrigan has been appeased because you dared confront her. You have prevailed, my bittersweet champion. And what are you to her? Her counterpart? Her opponent in some timeless game? She is my mother. My dreadful and sour-tempered mother. She is yours too, in a way. But you are not born from her terrible womb like me. You are but a distant child. What does she seek? Revenge? Retribution? She seeks nothing, since she only dreams of it. In the ancient tongue, when I was young, her name meant Ghostly Queen. Pray she never fully awakens, for her wrath knows no bounds. Why did Harriet Jones become a disaster? You are the doctor. You hold the knowledge needed to answer such a question. Have you the answer? Eckers are contagious. I mean, yeah, that's pretty... <laughs> it's pretty obvious. All Eckers are female. Um, I don't remember the one from 1966, but... Certainly the latest two have been. Icors seem to carry various diseases. They did not merely turn people into skulls. Their presence alone spreads death. Who knows whether the Red Queen awakens when cursed mortals endure such epidemics, or if the contagions emerge like a curse as she awakes. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm guessing... Hmm... Well, my guess for why the Ickers seem to be female would actually play into the answer for what they were just talking about, for uh, whether it's sort of a, what came first, the chicken or the egg, I guess? Well, it's not quite that problem, but yeah, does the Red Queen, Queen make the epidemic, or does the epidemic sort of make the Red Queen, kind of? But I'm guessing... The Ickers seem to be feminine because they are supposed to be sort of like vessels, right? For the Red Queen. And the Red Queen is a feminine figure, so maybe they're trying to take over a feminine body? Because it's supposed to be a representation of themselves in a way? Like they're trying to possess people? But 
human bodies can't possess such a hateful spirit. Hence why it becomes incredibly sickly and contagious. I noticed that all the icors were female, as if a male couldn't endure the metamorphosis. Harriet was also a bitter and resentful woman, as was her daughter. If the Morrigan prefers despoiled women to become the vessels of her wrath, we should be thankful that but one disaster hath been cast upon this wobbling world. This is not over. I am here to find the true origin of the blood of hate. Tis unwise to interfere with a tale rooted so deeply in the suffering of others. What will happen to Ascalon? Will you let them run the country from the shadows? I don't interfere with petty political intrigues. Ascalon was built upon the lie of a lineage. Such a deceit cannot last forever. But Lord Redgrave definitely possessed Marshall's blood. Untainted blood from the greatest vampire knight. Really? I wonder how he managed to acquire it. Perhaps I should retrieve this artifact before going back to sleep. So they sleep along with the Red Queen. I was wondering about that. So they don't watch over the Red Queen. They sleep at the same time. What will become of the Vampire Hunters? In their leader, you now have a spy behind enemy lines. By guiding your progeny, you may yet protect your immortal friends for some time to come. If you dare. So it seems I'm not going to really get to see the total fallout of what's going to happen with George McCollum. Because I don't think this game's going to go on much longer. I'm pretty sure it's going to end very soon. So I don't think we're going to see what our progeny, our plant inside of the Guard of Prewin is going to be able to do for us. But I guess we can just imagine the possibilities. What will become of the Brotherhood? I foresee trouble for them now that your progeny considers becoming the new primate. But I'm certain the current primate has no wish to resign. Exactly. And I am not fully convinced your progeny truly understands what dreadful power he is about to defy. I was kind of hoping that this game would have uh, an ending that may be somewhat similar to the Fallout games in the sense that when you end, you get to hear basically what were the consequences of your actions. Like, because of your actions in this district, and because you did this, you know, these people ended up building something, something, these other people died, that kind of thing. Like a summary of a couple years out or so to show you some of the ramifications of what you did. And I get the feeling that this is sort of that. You know, telling me what's going to happen with the Ascalon Club, what's going to happen with the Guard of Prewin, what's going to happen with the Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll. I think this might be that. No. I must know why Elizabeth fled here when I discovered she was the original healthy carrier. No, she is not what you say she is. That is a secret you will discover soon enough. And you? Why are you here? Which new thread of which old twisted plan are you seeking to pull now? Tell me the truth. I am just here to salute my sons and to bid them fare thee well. Your sons? Plural? My god, will you ever stop speaking in riddles? Perhaps I am too old for your spoken language. Perhaps you now have so many subtle words you no longer hear the simplest ones. Tell me about William Marshall. Why is his blood so strong? He is not stronger than you, only older. You are strong, Jonathan Reed. A champion of your time, chosen to defeat a threat spawned of this generation. Is he here? Is William Marshall here? Is that why you're here now too? Have I not already answered that question? So 
so, hmm, have I not already answered that question? Does that go back to what they said about I'm saying goodbye to my sons, plural? So William Marshall is here. His blood was not tainted. The blood Lord Redgrave possessed. That which I used in the serum. But what if it had been? Then you would have failed, I suppose. For the blood of hate would have corrupted you too. When he fought me, Geoffrey McCullum used a serum made of King Arthur's blood. Since then, I have discovered that it was vampire blood. Whose blood was it? You just said it. It was the blood of a king. The blood of the champion I chose to save this land in its time of greatest peril. King Arthur was also your progeny. Why am I not surprised? Yes, he was. But he failed in the end. And for centuries the land suffered his defeat. Who are your sons? Why do you bid them farewell now? You are my son. As is William Marshall. This is madness. How many have you created? Who else? Shakespeare? Isaac Newton? Alfred the Great? Francis Drake? Thomas More? Guy Fawkes? My progeny is scarce, for I rarely feel the urge to protect this land anymore. But yes, one of those you named is your immortal brother. Maybe you should meet one night. So that is all we are to you. Puppets you create to defeat some threat born from a dreaming devil. No. You are my sons. I am proud of you. I mourn when you fail. Speak clearly then, and answer my last question. What is it? Did I defeat the epidemic? Now you found the castle, Jonathan Reed. Only you can answer that. Farewell, my child. I shall dream about you soon. That doesn't give me comfort. Please don't dream about me. It's locked, all right. The castle walls look decrepit. Maybe I can find a way to sneak in. God, it really is so pretty, isn't it? Who are these people? Mary Englewood, born Whiteacre. Robin Englewood. Do I know that name, Englewood? Am I supposed to recognize that? Sounds maybe vaguely familiar? I'm not sure. <laughs> Look at that. I just want to explore the castle grounds a little bit. So pretty. Let's hold on. Let's zoom out here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, hey. There's a little house over there. Maybe it's just my imagination, but I think I smell Elizabeth's perfume. 
She must be here somewhere. <laughs> Some very fine stuff in such a crumbling castle. Definitely somebody still living here, obviously. Old Letter, London, 4th of August, 1865. Dear Lady Ashbury, thank you for your recent letter and all the good news it contained. I cannot wait to finally meet you when you arrive in London. The garden is beautiful under the summer sky, although I noted you wish to avoid heat and direct sunlight because of your frail health. You're welcome any day. We'll discuss this wonderful idea of yours concerning the foundation of an orphanage for young ladies. Inspired by the French Maison Royale de Saint Louis, sadly closed when the French people chose, my god, I can't even write these words down, to cut their king's head off. Such a place, destined to provide a good education to gifted but poor orphan girls, will surely excite my friends here in the city. You can count on me, and my influence to help make your project a huge success. Yours ever sincerely, Countess Alexandra Somerset. Right, so this foundation, um, this founding of an orphanage for young ladies is the orphanage where, what was her name? Um, the adopted daughter? The person that Lady Ashbury adopted from an orphanage? That must have been one and the same. Was it Charlotte Ashbury, I think their name was? And obviously the person who wrote that letter, Somerset, did not know that Ashbury was a vampire. Said, yes, I know you wish to avoid sunlight because of your frail health. That was their excuse. This castle is falling apart. Portrait of Elizabeth Blackwood by Johannes Vermeer, 1666. That's the date of the last disaster. Copy of a letter, Ashbury Castle, 21st of September, 1795. Dear Mr. McAllister, as the new legal owner of the Ashbury estate, I intend to quickly engage in the overdue maintenance and repairs of the walls and the crypt of the castle. Among the few architects I invited to send forth proposals, I was most impressed by your respectful approach concerning renovations on historical buildings and their preservation. I would be glad to meet you at your convenience. My only request would be to speak to you directly and not your assistance. Any evening of next month would be agreeable. You may come to the castle, or I can meet you at your office as you prefer. If you agree to come to the castle, I could show you what kind of repairs and modifications I have in mind concerning the crypt, which may need considerable work and reconstruction. Very sincerely, Lady Ashbury. So the crypt. Remember that William Marshall's crypt was moved from under the temple at some point before the Guard of Prewin could get to it. Was it moved to this castle? Like most castles, this one has a crypt and it holds something special inside. Oh, that's the portrait they were making of me, right. Portrait of Dr. Jonathan Reed by Elizabeth Ashbury, 1918. Elizabeth, my love, you allow my portrait to watch over you while you sleep. I'm flattered. of Lady Ashbury in Paris, 1888. This is really cool that we get to explore an old castle. That sweet fragrance. Elizabeth's perfume. She was here, and recently. Recent contract, Inverness, 18th of April, 1907. Dear Lady Ashbury, I write to confirm that my men will be at your castle next Monday to begin the new work on the crypt and its access. 
The plans have been approved and I'll personally be on site to supervise the installation of the locks and security measures you have requested. I can also assure you that my men have been briefed about never entering the crypt itself or the second floor of the castle. I must say I'm proud to continue and enhance the work started by my great-grandfather when employed, employed by your ancestor in 1795. Angus McAllister. Well, I guess we're getting some information on Lady Ashbury's age. They're, I don't know, at least like 150 years old or so. Yeah, so this castle's been rebuilt, or at least it was rebuilt in 1795. And then it's obviously fallen into ruin again. And then fairly recently, this was only about 11 years ago, this, this specific letter is about redoing the crypt specifically. So maybe the crypt has been recently renovated and is fine, but the rest of the castle, after a hundred years since being renovated, has fallen apart again? Or did something happen and it never was really renovated a hundred years ago anyway? Anyway, William Marshall is definitely in the crypt. That is definitely where they were moved. Ooh, what? Ah, secret buttons. Well, I'll do that in a second. Portrait of a Lady Ashbury by Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> 1885. Right, they did say that they have posed for famous painters, right? There's the Van Gogh. Locate the secret passage. Well, we know where that is. That's what the quest says. Yeah. That is the fireplace. Want to make sure I don't miss anything. They have a this lot of painting looks suspicious. Which one? Which painting? I notice that there's a lot of repeats, right? Like that one repeated over there, and I'm sure... Well, that one and that one is a repeat. That one and that one is a repeat. Yeah, there's a lot of repeats. I don't know what suspicious painting they're talking about. Hey, squeakers. <laughs> I could just suck on some rats right now if I wanted to. of Elizabeth and Jacob Blackwood in Versailles, 1788. Wow. Jacob Blackwood is pale as hell. Is that just like a powdered face kind of thing? Along with the wig? Or are they a vampire in that picture? That picture looks familiar. The figure in the picture. The Red Goddess. Looks like a Dark Souls boss fight. Old contract, Inverness, the, the second? Or no, Inver Inverness 11th of February. <laughs> That's what it says. Whoa. Left trigger? What? I don't have my controller plugged in. I don't know why it's saying that. 11th of February, 1807. Dear Miss Ashbury, when last we communicated, you asked for the conveyance of a large coffin from Temple Church, yes, London, to the crypt of the Ashbury Castle in Scotland. I am happy to report your request has finally been validated. My drivers have been informed that for security reasons, guard, guards must always protect the coffin. You have hired these individuals who will be waiting for us in London. They also have been informed that under no circumstances should the carriage try to pass a river by boat but always by road and bridges, for the precious wood and the relics inside the coffin cannot be exposed to humidity and moisture. You'll find a detailed quote for the entire operation attached to this letter. We are ready to go to London as soon as payment is received in full. Very respectfully, Samuel Lewis, independent contractor. What? 
Why is it telling me to... Oh. A sword and a moon are the symbols I should look for. Did it just teleport me here? It's weird. Ah, we've already been up here. Just couldn't go through the door at the time. Yeah, so there's buttons actually all over this room, not just right at the fireplace. So one of them on the fireplace is the sword, but the moon is over here. One last switch, and... D did you press it? That's odd. It didn't actually move and it didn't make a noise. Voila. then? Shall we lower our heads? No. No. You taught me that. Blood is approaching. Old but young. How strange. Shall I drink it? Smite it? No, father. He is a friend. Please, rest. I'll take care of it. Gaution, Elizabeth. Deceit runs through these veins. I know, Father. What took you so long, Jonathan? Is this... really him? Yes. This is William Marshall. First Earl of Pembroke, servant of five mortal kings, former regent and saviour of England. The greatest knight who ever lived, according to some. And you called him father? For he gave me eternal life, and much more. I have so many questions, Elizabeth. You always had questions, Doctor Reed. Now that I stand before you both, in this vault, I know not where to begin. We still have a few minutes left. A few minutes? Till what? Also, I'm uncomfortable by the fact that Lady Ashbury has a sword in their hands. Why are you holding that? Are you going to kill me? Why did you flee here? When you told me I was the healthy carrier, I had nowhere else to go. You mean you had to return to the real source of this scourge? Yes, to end it once and for all. What, what does that mean? Who? Someone's gonna die here, but I don't know who. Also, I'm wondering why Lady, or not Lady, uh, William Marshall is so sickly. Right, they seem like they're on death's door. Like they're barely... They're barely conscious, almost. I understand that they're a very old vampire, but... Don't vampires live forever? Don't they just get more powerful as they get older? Maybe they do have a lifespan that's just very, very long. I don't know. Will you go back to London? No, Jonathan. I do not intend to. And what of your daughter? Charlotte is a strong, independent woman who's about to come into money. I took care of everything. Now it's time for her to shape her future. She's gonna kill herself, isn't she? I have destroyed the disaster, this creature that Harriet Jones had become. The epidemic is no more, and London will recover. In time. 
The city has suffered, but it will prevail in the end. A more cynical analysis would be that this is an acceptable catastrophe. I cannot bear knowing I was the cause of all this through the use of my own blood. No. This catastrophe was the result of unethical experimentation and the will of a creature so inexplicably evil she exceeds all the terrible wonders I have seen since my death. But it was my blood all along. My corrupted blood of hate. The poisoned blood of my father. A healthy carrier. That's all I am. I think that's why the mysterious entity, when asked, is the epidemic actually over, was a bit mysterious about it and basically said, go into that castle and you answer that question for me. The epidemic in London is over for now, but I think they were getting at is the source, source, the healthy carrier or carriers, are they gone? Why are you hiding William Marshall here? How could I not take care of him? He sacrificed himself by giving me the only dose of antidote he had. He gave you the antidote? Yes. And in doing so, he knew he'd have to be confined here. And yet he volunteered. That's how great a man William Marshall was. And still is. Ah. Ah, the antidote. I was wondering if William Marshall gave, you know, Lady Ashbury is William Marshall's progeny. So Lady Ashbury drank William Marshall's blood. I was thinking, how come Lady Ashbury didn't become a disaster? If William Marshall is the original, like they're a healthy carrier, made Lady Ashbury a healthy carrier or whatever. Or I, I don't know if William Marshall is a healthy carrier, but certainly it's in their blood at least to pass it on to someone else. I was wondering why Lady Ashbury never became a disaster, and I guess the antidote explains that. Maybe they did, or they started becoming one. And then the antidote cured them, but didn't take the potential to make a disaster out of their veins. What do you do for him? I visit him as often as possible. I paint the landscapes he will never see again. I feed him with my blood. You feed him? You barely sustain yourself on the weak blood of the dying, yet you give him your blood? After he saved me from the blood rage, I swore I would never kill to feed. He said the same. Is he dangerous? What do you think? He is a thirsty Ekon who has not fed in centuries. An elder vampire, driven by an urge to kill and spread the blood of hate. Oh, I guess that's why they... Yeah, that must be why they're so weak, because they haven't properly fed in so long. Can he communicate? Yes. Sometimes he even seems like the noble knight who saved and raised me. But, you know, the malice never fully leaves his eyes. No redemption, then. And yet he thinks he has been offered immortality by the angels to protect the feeble and to smite the unholy. We could cure him. It's too late. The blood of hate has run for too long. The antidote would not work on him. I tried. Believe me, I tried. William Marshall you. He is the true original carrier. Yes. But he saved me by sacrificing himself. Saved you? How? The tears of angels. The cleansing of impure blood by an older, more powerful blood. It worked on me, did it not? Yes. Blood is the definitive key to our species. Scowls, cleansing, lineage. Do you really think it worked? It has, Jonathan. I was nothing but a beast, 
who took pleasure in slaughter. I roamed across Europe, reaping my bloody crop. It was the blood of hate, but my father's antidote cured me. How did you meet William Marshall? He was an Econ for centuries when he found me. He saved me from certain death by making me his progeny. Why did he choose you? You should ask him that. Did you ever blame him? Not even when he was infected and bit me. He is my father. He raised me. He taught me how to behave. Who are you, really? How could I answer that? I went through many lives and identities to reach this day. To you, I am Elizabeth Ashbury, and that's all I wish to be. I understand. And I respect your desire for privacy. Thank you, Jonathan. What about us? What do you mean? You know my feelings towards you, Elizabeth. But you left without a word, so I'm worried about your feelings towards me. I love you, Jonathan. I've loved you since the moment I saw you rescue poor Mr. Hampton in that filthy slaughterhouse, forgetting the danger as you turned your back, like the newborn fool you were. You should have told me. No, Jonathan. The William Marshall myth lies at the heart of so many hostile plans. I could not risk jeopardizing his safety. So why did you come here? You knew I would follow you. I can't let you go. Because I know now the blood of hate is still in my veins. No one but I can put an end to this tragedy. I can help you. You can trust me, Elizabeth. I know, Jonathan. You have been the most loyal ally these last few weeks. But this is my duty. Would your protege agree to speak with me? I have so many questions for him. Go on, Jonathan. But be careful. Yes, Sir William. My god, you really are William Marshall. You served Richard the Lionheart and his brother, King John. It is such a privilege to meet you. I did in my day. Come closer if you want to speak, for my hearing isn't what it used to be. I think your hearing is fine, sir. What is it you want, then? I found your research on the antidote. The tears of the angels. What ingredients did you use? Once I understood what the ingredients were, I used the tears of King Richard and the pure blood of the valiant Bodicea. And did it work? Yes. The tears cleansed my poor Elizabeth's blackened heart. It was such a blessing to see her smile again. I found and defeated the disaster that was threatening to smite London. You should know that the city is safe for now, Sir William. Then may I call you brother? Did you resist its poison? Even a scratch from a beast so evil could endanger you and all those you care for. You also defeated one in 1666. Who was it? She was a malicious witch who spread plague throughout the city with her army of rats. She had been hiding in a bakery in Pudding Lane for months when I finally found her. How did you defeat it? We fought for hours. In the end, I had to lock her in St. Paul's Cathedral and burn the building down. I wanted to be sure she was destroyed. The blood of hate. How does it affect you? Do you feel it now? The blood of hate? 
Yes. Nothing more than a sneeze, really. A sneeze held for so long, you could blow a fortress down if you released it. Can we speak about the Morrigan? The Red Queen? What of her? Do you know who she is? I don't want to discuss this in front of my sweet Elizabeth. Why? For a time, she too could hear the Red Song. The steps she danced to its melody brought pain upon the world. You met her, did you not? Just once. But she never ceased to sing to me. I love her song. It is a song of blood and war. I only wish she would sometimes let me rest. I would like to ask you about vampires. Vampires? What about them? Considering your experience, please tell me what you know. They are terrible creatures. I have seen and fought many in my time. Foul temptresses with sharp claws and shrieking beaks. Where did you encounter such creatures? The last time I saw one was in a Celtic temple near Salisbury. A terrible and godforsaken place full of ghosts and pestilence. I have never seen such a creature. What are you talking about? Of course you've never seen a creature like them. Vampires are deadly, swift, and implacable. Do you remember Murden, your maker? Only God is my maker. For he created everything on this earth. He blessed me with eternal life through his archangel, Michael. But Murden... Michael... Is a vampire. He made you a blood sucking creature of the night. Blood, yes. I used to drink it from the throats of the unworthy. Then I was punished for my deceit. During my penance, I rely entirely upon my sweet Elizabeth. Tell me about Elizabeth. How was she infected? I do not wish to discuss it. Please, Sir William. I need to know what the blood of hate is. How is it transmitted? After defeating the disaster in St. Paul's Cathedral, I return to my retreat, infected. This is where my sweet Elizabeth found me, for she heard my pain from across the sea. What happened then? The blood of hate had twisted me into a rage-filled man. I attacked my progeny and infected her too. Forgive me, Elizabeth. I failed you. You bit her again? Is that how she was infected with the disaster's blood? I think I understand now. Elizabeth fled, and I fell to my knees. Begging for forgiveness. I swore I would find a way to make things right. How did you meet Elizabeth? Times were tough. I had awakened to protect the land from a new plague. I heard her sing for her dead family. Singing for her death to come. I chose to save her. What did you do? I raised her as my progeny. After she left to see the world, I rebuilt her deceased parents' inn, owned it as William Thorne for a time. Those were good years. Did you really sacrifice yourself to save her? That was the only righteous path. The blood of hate made me betray her. I am at peace here. I can think about what I've done and how I failed. You agreed to be confined here then? Yes. Once I was sure she was cured, 
I ask to be locked down here. I deserve it. The world needs it. Do you not want to be cured? No. This hunger is mine. I would feel empty without it. It has been part of me for so long. All I want is quiet. Silence. We could set you free. Let you out. Isn't that what you want? I pray for the day I'll see the sky again. I have all but forgotten its colors. I could walk and do so many things beneath the stars. But I doubt it would be wise to release me. Then will you stay here and repent? Elizabeth told me it will not be long now. I cannot wait to feel the sweet caress of her hand on my cheek after so long as she releases me. Has the time come? Yes, Father. Why not unleash me then? To see the sky a final time? You already are the sky, and all its stars. I'm not defeated, for I welcome the sword you bear, for it is mine. You were never defeated, my lord. Farewell, Father. <laughs> and to you also, Jonathan. What do you mean? I can't stand what I've become. This healthy carrier, as you put it. The flames will purify the poison that runs in my veins. No! I won't allow this to happen. I am death. Jonathan, wherever I go, I can't stand it. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, champion of Murden, chosen to save England from the vampire epidemic. I could cure you. What do you mean? We are creatures of blood, Elizabeth. Everything about us is in our blood. With time, I could perfect the antidote William Marshall gave you. Trust me, for time is on our side. That is a risk I cannot take, Jonathan. I won't bring another such disaster into this world. Elizabeth, no. Trust me. I can save you. How could I trust you, Jonathan? Have you not betrayed me? I had choices to make. I forgive you. And that is my choice. <sighs> Elizabeth, I love you. Then let me go now. Wait! No! One prayer for the summoned, called by this song. Child born from darkness, whose path he must find. Now the song is sung, and your path chosen. England is safe, but the cost was dire. Blood and tears, both parched by cleansing flames. You've lost your way, my champion bittersweet. I am moved to pity as I feel your rampant rage void of purpose or meaning. My queen sleeps once again, and I'll soon join her slumber, until alas she rises, woken by the hunger never fed. Let's end with some thoughts on Vampire. About 90% of that end really, really worked for me. It was very long. Maybe it dragged a bit, but I don't think so. 
I don't think it did for me because almost every single one of those questions that I could ask at the end there of the mysterious entity and of William Marshall and of Lady Ashbury, all of those were things that I wanted to know about. I really wanted to know about them. That beautiful ruined castle as a set piece leading into the end where you learn all the details of exactly what happened with William Marshall and Lady Ashbury. That was so bittersweet and sad. And even though most of it was not really particularly surprising, most of it was stuff we already kind of knew. I mean, I knew just from the letters up in the mansion that William uh, and the mysterious entity, actually, I knew since then that William Marshall was in the crypt. That was pretty obvious. And we already knew most of the stuff about Lady Ashbury. Hearing the specifics didn't really like change the big picture, but I'm totally fine with that. I didn't need any any twists or anything like that at the end because just getting the answers to all these really not all that important questions in the grand scheme of things, but still just I wanted to know exactly how all this started with Lady Ashbury and William Marshall. And getting all those answers was really emotionally satisfying, even though we already kind of knew the big picture. Hearing the small picture was sad, but compelling, but also really, really sad. Jesus Christ. William Marshall, this being of hate that betrayed their own progeny and turned them, started turning them into a disaster and then cured them and then agreed to be locked in a crypt and never to see the sky for hundreds of years. Just, I mean, they're basically torturing themselves mentally and physically because they can't feed. They're obviously totally uh, the vampire equivalent of emaciated. And mentally, they just spend all their time down there thinking of what a failure they are. And I, it's just, God, what a horrible life. But here's the part that didn't work about the ending. There was a time, there was a very obvious kind of like bang switch. I don't know if the cutscene actually just changed as it was like loading a different option, or if it's more just in my mind I felt like something suddenly changed, but there was a point there right at the end when Elizabeth was about to throw themselves into the fire, and Jonathan says, I can cure you, trust me. And then it felt like there was a bam, and I felt the game's wheels turning, and I felt it tallying up all my choices that I've made through the game. I felt like... The game when you betrayed Elizabeth at the very, very, very beginning of the game feels like a million years ago before you even knew them. Remember that time that you were supposed to take care of the blackmail for Lady Ashbury, but you didn't want to do it because you didn't know them and you didn't trust them? Yeah, you kind of betrayed her once. Okay, she's going to die now and burn herself because of that. Okay, the end. That point. That point really ruined the illusion and everything that was going on emotionally. I could feel the sudden shift. And it just didn't feel earned. She said, how can I trust you? Something to this effect. How can I trust you? You've already betrayed me and I've chosen to forgive you. But that's my choice. And then burn themselves. I'm, I'm like 99% sure they're talking about the whole blackmail thing. I think that's the only time that I've betrayed Lady Ashbury, right? The feeling that that gives me... Well, there's a couple things. One, that just doesn't feel earned at all, right? Like for her to say that you betrayed me... I choose to forgive you. I mean, I did betray her. It makes sense that she would forgive me, but for her to basically... I mean, she says I forgive you, but she's also basically saying, you've betrayed me in the past, so I don't trust that you can cure me, so I'm going to kill myself. That doesn't feel earned at all. I don't feel like she would hold that over my head in the slightest. I don't feel like she would even mention it because that was forever ago. That was before we knew each other. We did not know each other then. And ever since I've started actually really knowing her, I've treated her with complete respect, reverence, whatever, just, you know, a close friend. And then I guess love her. So that, that felt strange. But also the other thing, not only does it not feel earned, but also I feel like because I did that one thing forever ago, I feel like that's why they threw themselves into the fire, and if I hadn't have done that, they wouldn't have? I don't know if that's true. I don't know if there is an ending where she doesn't throw herself into the fire, but it feels like it, with the way it happened, with the way it seemed to tick and then choose a, a split in the cutscene based on what you've chosen in the past. It felt like it. So right now, I feel like this unearned thing that Lady Ashbury wouldn't really think just happened, and then so the game burned her alive. That's what I feel like. It feels, it feels real bad. 
the ending really kind of serves as an, as an example for the rest of the game too, where a lot of it I liked. But then also it's really a mixed bag and there's some stuff that definitely doesn't work. That's how I feel about the game as a whole. I, If you ask me, what do you think of Vampire? I would say I really enjoyed my time with it. It's kind of weird and bad in some ways, but also really cool in other ways. So let's dive into that. Why, why is it such a mixed bag? What works, what doesn't? Generally, the characters really work. I think that's probably Don't Nod's strength, is character development and writing. For most of the characters, except for the dickholes and drunkards and whatnot, generally I would exhaust all the dialogue options because I just wanted to talk with these people. I wanted to know more about them. They felt authentic and real and voice acting was pretty good. Every character that you can talk with has a, a good amount of depth to them. I like how basically every person that you see that isn't an enemy is an actual real person that you can talk with. It doesn't do the thing where there's a lot of people in the world, but a lot of them are generic and don't really have a name and you can't really talk with them. Like if you try to talk with them, they might just spit out some generic thing. It could have easily done that in a hospital with a bunch of patients that you couldn't talk with and a bunch of nurses that don't have names that just say like, ah, oh, hi, Jonathan, or something like that. Just a generic greeting or like, ah, oh, look at all these patients. God, we're not doing so great. They could just spit out some generic thing like that, but no, every character you can actually talk with. Except, there are patients in the beds. There's some patients that you definitely can't talk with. They're like super low quality and just kind of to fill beds and make it feel like the place is kind of overcrowded with patients that they have to deal with. But that's okay, I never, I never tried to talk with them and thought, hmm, can I really talk with this person? Because it was super obvious that you couldn't. Aside from that, if they're not a patient or an enemy, you could talk with them, and they're people with real names, with full dialogue trees, with hints and all that stuff. So generally, I really liked talking with people. The characterization's really good, but there is definitely some problems with the people as well, which I don't know if it's down to the writing or more down to, uh, I guess, like gameplay design, you might call it. But a lot of conversations felt bizarre to me because the uh, the sort of gameplay loop that I feel like the game is going for, and mechanically it is going for this, is the main point of talking to people, mechanically, is to unlock hints so that you get more XP if you kill them. Which might be a good gameplay loop if you're playing a character who wants to kill every single person who's just straight up evil, but I, like I'm pretty sure most players, don't want to kill most people because most of the people you meet are perfectly find people that you care about and don't want them to die. You want you want to help them, if anything. So it feels very odd that a lot of conversations, you're working towards making a, a more juicy kill, right? Like you're, you're fattening up your prey before you kill them, but most of the time you don't actually want to kill them. That just mechanically feels very strange. Uh, for a lot of the dialogue, it doesn't feel like the point of talking to them is just because you're interested in them. That's why I talked to them, because I wanted to know more about them and their life, and I wanted to solve their problems and whatnot. Yeah, I feel like there's things you should be able to do in the conversations. There should be a point to a lot of the conversations where you could try to actually help people. Not just know more about them, but to try to actually like convince them of something, help their situation a bit. There's a lot of situations where I want to do that, but the game doesn't allow me to. Like those two uh, gay soldiers from uh, that fought in the World War, and had been both were buried together and were claustrophobic, and one was afraid of rats. Like those two people, just as one example, they're having a lot of issues, right? Health issues, uh, mental issues, dealing with a lot of PTSD and fear and all this stuff. Didn't want to go to the hospital because they were afraid of it. And I wanted to help them, right? I wanted to like work through some of that stuff and, and see if I could convince them to go into the hospital, uh, do something to make them feel better. They had had an argument with each other, so I kind of wanted to patch that up. So I talked with them, all the while gaining XP through unlocking hints, making it, uh, making them a better kill, but I didn't care about that. I wasn't going to kill them and I didn't. So what I wanted to do was help them, but I couldn't do that. There, there was no quest or anything I could do. I felt like a natural progression of uh, this conversation was leading to something like, hey, you should maybe talk with each other and maybe uh, if you talk with this person, they can help you with your claustrophobia issue or maybe like I'll go with you into the hospital, escort you to make sure you feel comfortable. You don't need to worry about anything and just, you know, something to help them. But I couldn't. 
And there's a lot, a lot of conversations with people that feel like that weird sort of dead end. Mechanically, it's not really a dead end because it gives me more potential XP, but again, I don't care about that in most cases. So for my purposes, it was a dead end. It felt like the conversation was leading towards me being able to do something, but I couldn't. So I'm just like, okay, so you've told me about all your traumas and stuff, and um, I'm a doctor. Um, yeah, okay, thanks, bye. It's like there, there's no logical next step. It feels like it was leading towards something, but it often doesn't. So conversations with people feel very strange sometimes. The more I think about it, the more I think that the hint system, or at least tying the hint system to blood quality, feels totally unnecessary. I don't see why that was in the game. I understand they're trying to reward progress, but I don't think talking with people needs that sort of progress. I don't think it needs a, like, monetary reward, basically, being paid in blood quality for talking with people. It makes some sense to keep hints as a way to tell you that, hey, you've unlocked a new dialogue option that you can talk to somebody about, but yeah, tying it to blood quality, I don't feel like that was necessary or really interesting. I think having blood quality tied to just their physical health was fine, because that you can also still influence, give people medicine. And it also makes sense. It makes very intuitive sense that if someone's physically unhealthy and you give them medicine, they will heal and their blood quality will increase. That totally makes sense. On the other hand, being like, hey, I know that my victim likes, likes to eat at this restaurant and they have two kids. Why would that increase their blood quality? That doesn't make any sense. And even though I feel like Donut's strength is in storytelling and characters and, and writing, I feel like the action in this game is also pretty damn good. It's, I mean, it's nothing amazing. It's not some super complex system. I wouldn't call it exceptional, but I found it really satisfying. It was satisfying. There was clear progression trees that felt good and gave me goals to move towards. Except I did kind of run out of stuff to upgrade by the end of it, but for most of the game I felt like there was clear upgrade paths for my equipment at least. I never did reach the top level of any of the uh, abilities, actually. But equipment-wise, I think I would have appreciated some more customization. It wasn't particularly complex, which could be an issue if the game focused a huge amount on combat, but it feels like it definitely doesn't. You could go out and just grind enemies if you wanted to really do that. I don't think you would gain XP for it but you would get crafting ingredients. I didn't do that, I didn't feel any need to do that. And so, playing the game without that, it's at least, I'd say at least 50% talking with people. There's a lot of talking. So even though it is a pretty damn long game, a good amount of it is spent talking and not fighting. I think if I was fighting for 30, 40 hours for most of it, like it was a Dark Souls game where almost everything you do is combat, I think the combat system would be too simple for that. It wouldn't support it, I think it would get very dull. I think that the whole district health system is very weird. It makes... I, I understand why it's there, and it did give me some serious motivations, especially earlier in the game, where, you know, you're a doctor. You're, you're a doctor, you're trying to help people, you're trying to cure the epidemic, and I'm also talking with these people, and I get to know them, and a lot of them I just like personally, not to mention my duty as a doctor to try to heal everybody. So it makes sense that I would be motivated to try to help a district and would want to cure any ailments that I could within each district and increase the health. That make, Mechanically, that makes sense to have a sort of district health system because it ties in with the fact that I know how to make uh, diagnose and, and make antidotes and things like that and treatments for people. That makes sense. And it was interesting for the beginning of the game as I ran around from district to district, making sure that I healed up everybody before I slept so that the district health would increase. But towards the end of the game, it started feeling really pointless because in the past, I've had some experiences where I did every single side quest I possibly could in a zone and I healed up everybody. So everybody was either completely healthy or recovering. And then you sleep and the district health goes up by like 6%. And then a bunch of people get sick again. So it's like, I did all that work, and the district health just increases by a few percent? And what does that even mean? If it's in hostile, okay, things are terrible, that obviously makes a big, big change. But if you're above that level, and you're around stable, well, anything above critical, then there's not much of a reason to care. 
If you heal everybody, it'll only go up a little bit. If you kill somebody, it'll go down quite a bit, so you probably want to avoid that for the most part. But it felt pretty pointless to heal everybody because it wouldn't make that much of a difference to the health of the district. And what did increasing the district health from, say, stable to whatever the next tier up is, or next tier down, what, what did that actually do? What kind of effect does that actually have upon anybody? It felt like nothing. And now having finished the game, remember I lost one district, the East End Docks. It felt bad when it first happened as I saw those people's names get X'd off and I saw them, uh, their headstones at the cemetery. That felt bad, but other than that, it felt like it didn't matter. It wasn't even shown in the final cutscene. There wasn't like, I wish I had, Jonathan saying like, I wish I had done better in the East End, it fell and because of my decisions with Sean Hampton and everything. No, it's just like, yeah, they're, they're dead now, there's enemies there, okay. It's like, that's it. it. By the end, the whole district health system really just felt pretty much pointless. So, that is Vampire. A very mixed bag. It's got great music, pretty good voice acting, generally really good writing, and mostly looks really gorgeous. Except when textures decide to not load in and people have a face that looks like a blurry potato. That's kind of weird, but mostly it looks really pretty. The fighting system's pretty good. The district system provides a sensible motivation to do things for the beginning and then afterwards feels really pointless and is kind of weird. The whole hint system is, and its link to blood quality is really weird and makes conversations very strange and sometimes pointless feeling, like they are missing the climax to the conversation or something. Just a lot of general strangeness, just a lot of pieces that don't quite fit together. But overall, I really enjoyed it. It comes together as a an interesting and surprisingly touching experience. So that has been Vampire. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.